So when we're palpating for trigger points, the big thing is we want to be able to palpate perpendicular to the direction of the muscle fibers. So when there's a knot or a trigger point, the analogy I give to patients a lot of times is that say you had like a rope that was tied between two posts and you had just a little bit of slack in it. Think of that like, like a strain of the muscle. And if you went to the middle of that rope and you started to knot it up, it's going to pull the whole thing kind of tight. So when we're palpating for trigger points, typically we can find or locate kind of a tight band in the muscle. And that's what we're looking for when we find the trigger points. So if we find the direction of the muscle fibers and we press perpendicular, and like Nate was saying earlier, we have to get in there a little deeper than we might be used to palpating with traditional needling techniques. But you can really kind of feel the, the fibers, feel the direction of the fibers. And if you come across an area, I'm so far. Get a little spot, yeah. yeah. A little <laughs> right there. So we can find an area where there's, where there's sort of that top band. And then if we press then along that top band, we can find a localized area of tenderness. Okay. But um, basically, when I'm needling rectus femoris, when I'm needling vastus medialis, to a degree, when I'm needling vastus lateralis, you can typically get all those in a supine position. If somebody's main issues are on the, the lateral thigh, um, I will sometimes needle that in a sideline position. Um, with what Nate was touching on earlier with the IT band, and we'll talk much more about this when we get to needling the upper lateral hip muscles, um, the IT band itself is not contractile tissue. But a lot of times when people are having soreness or tenderness to palpation along the outer thigh, which if you press hard, press hard enough, that's a pretty tender area, a lot of times what you're feeling is actually just trigger points or tender, tender areas in the vastus lateralis rather than in the IT band over that. This is why you have those patients that swear the only thing that helps their IT band syndrome is foam rolling the lateral leg. Which you can't affect the tension really in the IT band from foam rolling that area. You but you work on vastus lateralis yes, in the most painful way possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so If you had know. a patient that couldn't tolerate the palpation due to pain, would you just use a different approach other than trigger point needling? I wouldn't get in there as, as deeply. I mean, uh, I would have to palpate at least to some degree, but I'm not going to get in there quite as much. I mean... Ideally, you get in the trigger point or close, as close to the trigger point as you can, but as long as you're generally in the muscle, I still think there can be some, okay. some benefit, and especially with using some needle retention, um, perhaps with some electricity, then still we can have an effect. Um, so generally, um, so one more thing. Um, when we're needling, a couple common techniques of, of palpation and of using your non-needling hand, we have what's called a flat palpation, and that's generally what I'm using for the quadricep. So essentially my fingers or the pads of my fingers are flat against the skin. We also have what's called a pincer palpation, and there's a couple variations of this. Um, I don't use this so much on the quad, but sometimes if I'm getting into the adductor magnus, which we'll talk about in a little while, you actually kind of pinch up the skin like this, and you needle into the tissue that you're pinching. But generally for the quadricep, it's going to be a flat palpation. So for the rectus femoris, basically the fibers are coming right up from the patella. I press perpendicular to those fibers. We find perhaps where we have a little area of, of tissue tension. And then tap the needle in. And I'm going to be nice to her. I try to be nice when I'm, I'm demoing, so I'm not going to do, do too much pistoning. The pistoning would actually be needling, or excuse me, moving the muscle, moving the needle in and out into the muscle like this. Up and down. You can change the angle a little bit find where you might get a, a twitch response in the muscle, and then depending on the tolerance of the patient, um, you can use that technique, withdraw the needle, or typically I'm using some retention of the needles typically for at least about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. So that would be rectus femoris. Um, the technique is basically the same, whether you're going vastus medialis, remind another needle or two. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. So when, what are you feeling when you know that you've reached the point that you want to reach? Is that, is that something you're getting through the needle or are you getting that from your patient? How are you receiving that information? Where I decide where I'm going to needle in the first place? No. Or where, 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 I, where, where I stop? You, where you stop. It, it can be a combination of factors. I mean, for one, if, it's, if I'm getting a twitch response and that's too uncomfortable for the patient or just with, with or without the twitch response, if it's too uncomfortable for the patient, I'll tell them, you know, just give me feedback as I'm needling and if you need me to stop, let me, let me stop. Um, if you are using a more aggressive needling technique and you're trying to elicit that twitch response, you get a few twitches and then, it, then there's no more twitches, that would be the time to stop. Um, but it just kind of depends on how aggressive you want to be with your... You can definitely feel tissue density changes through the needle sure. when, you're, when you're doing intermuscular needling. And the tighter the muscle, the denser it is. But that, that's only one piece of the puzzle, obviously. 
feeling for those twitches and talking to your patient is super right. important. And while we're mentioning stuff about just putting in needles, the, the big thing we want to be cautious of, no matter where we're needling, is those nervy electrical sensations, just like with most of our acupuncture points. Mm -hmm. So go slow. There's no race to get to the trigger point. Right. Take your time getting in there. Right. I tell patients if they feel the muscle kind of twitch or jump, or if they feel kind of a, an ache, a heavy sensation, you know, generally those are, those are fine. Um, but I don't want them to feel anything too sharp. I kind of make a bad joke and say, yeah, it's a needle, it's sharp. But we don't want them to feel like a repeated sharp stabbing sensation. Sometimes that can mean you've hit a vein or you've hit something like that. Um, but, but definitely not electrical as well. And that's particularly relevant when we get into needling and piriformis and things like that. So I know sometimes when I'm when I'm needling, I will get, you know, the like the dachi or the, yeah. or the deep ache but not necessarily feel the twitch. So when you get that dachi, are you taking that as you've, you've activated that muscle or are you really looking for that twitch to happen as well? It's not a quick answer to that one because I kind of have my PT hat and my acupuncture hat okay. that I'm wearing. If I've got more of my PT hat, I'm kind of looking for that twitch response. Um, the twitch response would be a form of dachi to me. You okay. know, that, that if you put the needle in and you feel the muscle respond, you feel that kind of grab, you know, you kind of, you know, you've kind of hit where you needed to hit. Um, but depending on how, how much in pain the patient has and how much time you want to spend prodding around, if I've gotten that dachi and, and, you know, I feel like that's enough. I mean, you kind of on a case by case basis, that might be enough, you know, especially if you're going to leave the needles in a little while and. I kind of think about it on that same spectrum of stimulation. Just sticking the needle in and not doing anything or even getting a dutchy response is the lowest level of stimulation from it. And repetitively getting the localized twitch response until the muscle just doesn't twitch anymore is sort of the highest yes. level with or without e -stim. And there's a spectrum in between. You would probably get a little quicker results if you get some twitch versus none at all as far as how many times you have to treat. Right. But you're going to get there either way. Right, right. And if the person is so sensitive you can barely touch them, you're not going to piston until the muscle quits right. local, right. local twitch response. No, they won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be able to walk. <laughs> so if I'm needling vastus medialis, one thing, when I'm inserting the needle with this sort of technique, yeah, it's tender there, mm -hmm. um, I'm inserting it perpendicular to the skin. So that's gonna be, that angle is going to change a little bit depending on, on where you are on the thigh. So I want to be at that 90 degree angle. See, did, you, did you see that? So that's a twitch response. And then I'm going to be nice to her, so I'm not going to repeatedly piss her so much. She's like, go for, go for it. <laughs> I'll do a little bit. She'll kick you. But again, if, if, it kind of, if you get a twitch, you kind of exhaust that in a perpendicular direction, you can withdraw the needle not all the way, but withdraw it enough to change the angle of the needle. <laughs> okay. That perpendicular is important because a lot of folks seem to want to needle this area straight down rather than perpendicular to the surface, and deep needling in vastus medialis does run the risk if it's pointed towards the table of running into the femoral artery. Right, right. So in general, a, a very general rule of thumb, and there, there may be some exceptions to this that we'll talk about, but a very general rule of thumb is that needling t towards the bone is a good idea with, with basically all these muscles. Needling towards the bone, we're, we're minimizing the risk of hitting vasculature and so forth. Bony so, backdrop. So vastus intermedius, Clinically, you really can't distinguish that so much between the rectus femoris and so much. I mean, it's it's under there, especially if you're needling rectus femoris, you're going to be getting some of those fibers. I'm not necessarily distinguishing that clinically too much when I'm not palpating, but definitely vastus lateralis. I'll go ahead and do one needle from from here. Um, part of this, if I'm going for a technique of a little of, of needle retention as opposed to just pistoning and withdrawing, I'm going to try to maximize positions. I'm not having her have to change positions too too much. So I would probably just do that in this position, but just know that a sideline position would be a good one. If somebody's main complaint was just more pain on that lateral thigh area, a sideline position, I typically do that with a pillow between someone's knees, would be a good way to target that. I have a question. Sure. When you're needling these muscles, are you generally looking closer to the knee? Or, I mean, they're like really long muscles. Wherever along the muscle they're having an issue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so. It was just an ease of draping yeah, that he went ease, to the distal half ease of draping yeah. <laughs> for demo's sake. And since this is the first muscle and you don't know me, and, you know. <laughs> okay. So this one, just be careful palpating the outside of the thigh. I mean, that's a, it's a safe region, but that's a tender area. So if you get in there too much, and that can be... It'd be tender. weird for there to be no one in here with trigger points in vastus lateralis. 
But if we don't find anybody, I've got a ton of them right now. <laughs> Still the key, but not twitchy.